Let's talk about predicting taxonomy for 16S OTUs. To predict taxonomy for OTU sequences, we need a sequence reference database with taxonomy annotations, and of course, we also need an algorithm. An algorithm is needed because even if we have a large database such as Silver, there is often no exact match to an OTU sequence. Simply taking the taxonomy from the blast top hit, which is quite commonly used in the literature, is not a good idea because the lowest ranks may be different. For example, the OTU may belong to a different genus from the top hit. Many different reference databases, <clears throat> excuse me, many different reference databases are available. We could use a large nucleotide database such as GenBank. One of the large 16S databases, Silver, Green Genes, or RDP. An environment specific database such as HOMD for the human oral microbiome. Or we could use a database of cultured strains where the taxonomy is authoritative. The best known database of this type is the RDP classifier training set. Large nucleotide databases such as GenBank are problematic because they contain many poor quality 16S sequences and many inaccurate taxonomy annotations. The large 16S databases are also problematic because as I showed earlier, their annotations have an error rate of something like 10 to 20%. Some environment specific databases have been developed, notably HOMD for the human oral microbiome, but focusing on a particular environment doesn't help provide more accurate annotations. So these databases suffer from the same problems as the more comprehensive 16S databases. I believe that the best choice of reference is to use cultured strains because these are the only sequences that have reliably known taxonomies. Many different taxonomy prediction al algorithms have been published. How should you choose which one to use? I think most people would agree that the most important consideration is biological accuracy. So let's consider how to measure taxonomy prediction accuracy. It turns out to be very challenging to make a realistic benchmark that reflects the accuracy that would be achieved in practice. There are many publish, published attempts to design a benchmark test, but unfortunately most of them are quite misleading. I don't have time to go into detail on the problems in benchmarking, but to give you a sense of the difficulties, I'll briefly discuss one well-known approach, the leave one out strategy used to validate the RDP classifier. With leave one out, each query sequence is extracted from the reference database and classified using the remaining sequences as a training set. Accuracy is measured as the fraction of query sequences that are, that are classified correctly. Using this method, the RDP authors claim an accuracy of around 92% for assigning genus to full length sequences. However, what they're really measuring here is the number of singleton generator, uh, <laughs> the number of singleton genera in the reference. If the genus has only one reference sequence, then there are none left after it's extracted and it's impossible to predict the genus correctly. Thus, the maximum possible accuracy is less than 100% due to the singletons. For the other genera, classification is easy because there's always at least one highly similar sequence in the reference. A key point to keep in mind is that no single test can indicate the performance you'll get in practice because accuracy is strongly dependent on the data. Prediction gets harder with lower sequence identity because the lowest common rank is harder to determine and there will be more novel groups. To implement a more informative benchmark test, I measured accuracy at different identities. To do this for a chosen identity, I'll call it T, I split the reference database into a query set and a reference set 
so that the top hit identity for every query sequence is approximately t. The results can be visualized by plotting average prediction accuracy against identity. Here are some typical results. This plot shows the accuracy of genus predictions for the V4 region. I tested several methods, including the RDP classifier at 80% and 50% bootstrap confidence, syntax at 50% bootstrap, and a consensus method from Chime version 2. Notice that accuracy falls rapidly with identity. So as you would expect, taxonomy prediction gets harder as the query sequences diverge from the reference database. At 97% identity, the accuracy has already fallen to around 70% for the better methods in this test. At 95% identity, the genus accuracy has dropped to around 50%. We can also see that Chime, the Chime version 2 method has much lower accuracy than the other method shown here. These results also show that to get the claimed accuracy of around 90% with the RDP classifier, your OTU sequences must be greater than 90% than 98% identical with the cultured strain reference. This is unlikely to happen in practice. So, as we expected, prediction gets harder with lower identities. To understand the accuracy we're likely to get on a given data set, we need to know how the identities of the OTUs look compared with the reference sequence. This can be visualized as a top hit identity distribution. As an example, here is the top hit identity distribution for human gut OTUs made with V4 sequences by comparison with the RDP training set. The distribution is skewed towards high identities because human gut is a well-studded environment and therefore contains many named groups. Histogram bars are colored according to the most probable lowest common rank. For example, the dark blue bars have 98 and 99% identity where the OTU is most likely belong to a novel species in a known genus, and the LCR is therefore genus. Using this identity distribution, we can estimate that the overall genus accuracy on this data set would be around 50% if we use the RDP classifier or syntax. Here is the top hit identity distribution for a set of V4 OTUs made from soil samples. Soil is a highly diverse environment containing many unnamed groups, and we therefore see fewer high identity OTUs. On this data set, the average accuracy of genus predictions would probably be, probably be worse. Can we predict the species name from a 16S sequence? Several published papers have reported high accuracy in this task. For example, Spingo claims 90% species prediction accuracy from V4 sequences. However, this is clearly impossible because the probability that two identical V4 sequences come from different species is 0.37. On a more realistic test, I found that Spingo has only 17% accuracy on V4. Even with full length sequences, the best methods had accuracy of only 25 to 30 percent. To briefly summarize the key points, with any 16S sequence, even full length, genus predictions are unreliable and species prediction is effectively impossible in most cases. Most published methods have much lower accuracy than claimed and some methods have consistently lower accuracy than the better algorithms. None of the methods I tested is consistently better than the RDP classifier, so it seems that no measurable improvement has been achieved since the classifier was published in 2007. I can re recommend using the RDP classifier and syntax as both methods are consistently among the best and unlike other methods, they provide a useful measure of confidence. 
If you're interested in learning more about this work, you can read about it in my PRJ paper shown here.